What's up guys? Just a typical day working on junk. Anybody notice anything different about the old International? Oh yeah. So we're working on this thing today, just doing some maintenance and some just random stuff. Today's kind of a slow day, so I want to get some much needed work done on this. So yeah, put this thing back on yesterday. Me and my, my buddy came over yesterday and helped me. We put this shield back on the dump box here. And if anybody remembers, I used to have this on there. This this thing's been on there for quite a few years now. When I originally built this dump box, when I originally bought this dump box, it had that on there, but I cut it off because I was only using it for firewood at the time, and I was loading the firewood myself with the skid steer and with a processor and stuff, so it was nice to just have that back window and the clearance and everything. However, now that I'm moved up to the stone industry, the loaders that load these trucks are huge like you could almost put this truck in one of the buckets on them and it's been a problem for quite a while that when they load this truck with stone this the stone spilled over that orange thing and it was hitting the cab i got a bunch of dents and stuff in the cab it's like sandblasted right there sanded right off the paint's all chipped and you know it's just a matter of time before that back window gets bashed out you know, if that back window gets got bashed out, it'd be totally my fault, you know, for not having the correct, uh, you know, safety equipment, so to speak, on the truck. So I thought it was important to spend the day and get this thing put back on. So I got it bolted and welded and everything. So I could tell just by looking at the loader guys when they load me at the quarries that nobody ever said anything, but I could tell that they're kind of getting a little frustrated, you know, trying not to... You know hit the cab or anything with the stone you know and, it, and i'm sure you know it's kind of a pain in the ass so you know hopefully this will just make everybody's job a little bit easier and you know hopefully my cab's not going to get destroyed now but that's just the way it goes when you got a work truck and i can't blame anybody but anyway we got something else in store too that we're working on so you know, of course, as usual, I'm lazy when it comes to these videos, and I didn't film half of it, but... Anyway, we'll start here. So this this is all rotted out right here. These This is all holes. Everybody says, you know, just wire brush it and paint right over it. The holes magically just go away. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way in the real world, so we're going to actually have to cut this out and replace this piece. And so originally these fenders on this truck this part of this fender was actually back here that's what these rust spots are from from this rubbing on actually that's what that cutout is right there was for for the cab and now that we got you know like three feet of extra frame on it and moved up we don't have to worry about that anymore so i went in and i got a roller so i rolled this and i put it on the brake and it's gonna go right there and move it up but that can be straight on the bottom now because what my long-term plan is for this truck is actually to get two round peterbilt fenders for it and what i want to do is mount the headlights on here kind of like the the old peterbilts are or any peterbilts really and i want to get rid of these ugly fenders on this thing they actually look kind of cool but they're they're pretty roach this used to be a snow plow so so these fenders are, you know, they're they're pretty shot. They're broke in a lot of places and everything, but that's my long-term goal. And eventually when I do that, I want to actually make, you know, the hood will go all the way straight and then come to fenders. Just like the old 62 Pete did, I'll probably put a piano hinge on this part here eventually and make it so the top, you know, the sides fold up and all that. But... You know, one step at a time. This is all rotted out, and I've been wanting to replace this for quite a while. We got some other problem areas on it, but my plan is, is hopefully within the next month or so, I'm going to paint this truck, finally. And I'm going to paint it the color. It's like orange crush color here. Of course, it's dark over here. You can't really see it, but 
It's a really nice color. I'm gonna paint this whole truck and I just have to start fixing little stuff like this because the paint's kind of pricey and I don't want to spend the money on the paint and just paint over this crap and have it, you know, not hold up super great. You know, I'm not looking to do a show job, but I want to look, have it look nice. And I'm going to paint the box too. But. So as we stand now, after that two hour long talk, where I'm at now is I'm going to cut this orange out and butt weld this piece in there. And hopefully everything's going to come out pretty good. All right, we got this tacked on. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do here yet. I'm just gonna kinda play it by ear. This isn't gonna be a show truck. I just want it to be nice and, you know, pretty solid. You know, it ain't gotta be, it ain't gonna win any shows. I just want it to, I wanna preserve it a little bit, make it look nice. All right, so the way to do these kind of patches like this is not to just burn it right in all the way around. Go like every six inches and tack it and then get your blow gun and it off like that. And then when it's warm to the touch, go again another six inches until you get, you know, about a half, half inch apart or so. Then you can do like three tacks, go like six inches, cool it off. just. The whole object is is to keep this cool. Do not, don't let it get hot because as soon as this gets hot, it's gonna warp and you're gonna end up with a crappy job, even crappier than this.
you know, patience is key with this kind of stuff. And I know I'm I'm not the most patient person in the world, and a lot of times I get impatient. And that's how it gets warped. But you know, you just have to take your time. You can see even I'm not abiding by the six-inch rule, but. It's, it's just an old farm truck. All right, I'd say this looks pretty good. Looks a lot better than the rotted piece that was in there. Things wasted. Pretty straight with the bottom of the door. I like it. So. We're just going to spray some crappy black paint or whatever I can find in there. Just glob it on. I'll wire brush this a little bit. All right. Some broken windows, swear words, and thrown beer bottles later. It looks like absolute garbage. What did you expect? <laughs> so this side actually came out not that great i'm not really happy with this side but like i said for the hundredth time this is not meant to be a show truck i just want it to be decent i'm not gonna go all out and do a crazy job on this thing so back when this thing was original and had the gas motor in it this fender was back here and this part here was right up against this well i was at a junkyard doing a scrap run one day and some complete idiot in a a roll-off dumpster truck you know you know it's crazy how stupid people are and i'm not even going to give this guy any sympathy because this guy came backing up like the scrapyard is i don't know three four hundred feet anyway and i was backed up to the pile at the time i had the flatbed on it and i was in the back of the truck and this guy came barreling back, like flying backwards, you know, really fast. And me and the guy next to me were yelling, whoa, 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 whoa. And the guy just, I mean, he was flying. And actually, that's how all this happened. This bumper was actually in decent shape at one time. And that's actually how all this crap ended up coming to be. Well, he ended up pushing the bumper back into the fender which pushed the fender this part back into the cowl and creased this smashed this right back this was probably like here and i i pulled it out with the skid steer oh i mean this man this was probably this is way before my youtube channel this was probably like six seven years ago or something like that and i pulled it out and i just haven't ever messed with it since but man that pisses me off because this bumper was actually a pretty nice bumper it's off of my 379 I had way before YouTube too. And this bumper was pretty nice, you know, and that, that idiot just smashed right into it and just ruined everything. And, and uh, you know, I, I lost my, I, I lost my temper on him, you know, but I, you know, I didn't get into a whole insurance thing and all that, which looking back, I wish I kind of would have, but whatever it's done and over with but anyway that's the story on that but this side here actually came out really nice you know, of course the passenger side comes out nice this side i'm wicked happy with but this side here i mean it'll look decent but you could tell that things just aren't see on the other side i actually replaced the whole thing but this this side here was solid so i didn't there was no need for it so i just made what was there which it would have actually been nicer looking back if i would have cut it out and replaced the whole thing but it is what it is you know it'll it'll look good once it's done all right so now it's time to mix up some meow mix we're gonna throw that in some of the really bad areas here and then it'll look real good i'm gonna mix a little bit of fiberglass resin in with our Meow Mix, a.k.a. Duraglass. That way it'll thin it out a little bit, make it a little easier to spread. You know, seeing all the crappy work that I do on this channel, you'd never think that I'd, I was an actual body man, but 
you know, body work isn't really my passion, even though I do it pretty much the whole winter months, and I'm really good at it. I just don't see a point in wasting time, you know, making, not that the truck doesn't deserve it. Wow, that, wow, this stuff definitely, uh, wow, that hasn't been used in a while. Needs to be kneaded a little bit. Wow, oh, that was, uh, some interesting sounds this thing's making. All right, well, definitely wouldn't be doing that on a nice car. And for the record, that's way too much hardener. <laughs> way too much hardener. But... You know, this kind of stuff is actually pretty fun. This stuff that doesn't really matter that much because, you know what? It doesn't matter. It's a work truck. You know, maybe five, ten years down the road if I get a, you know, an actual dump truck that I use that I don't care about beating the crap out of. My plan is, is to have a nice dump truck someday that I can, you know, like something newer. Not newer, but... Something that I can actually, you know, just drive around and not care if it gets dents in it and stuff like that. We better hurry up because stuff dries quick. I ain't got time for babbling on right now. This stuff dries really fast. Especially with the amount of hardener that I put in it. And it's a pretty warm, dry day today, too. And I say this in all my videos. If you're looking to restore a 72 Chevelle or a, you know, 100-point show car, this is not what you do. is kind of your low-end restoration here guys this is not the right way technically to do restoration projects It's nice when your sheet metal work comes out good because then you don't need a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of meow mix. You got much time to work with this stuff. Yeah, we're hardening up pretty good here now. Oh yeah. I think that's all she wrote.
All right, we did a couple hours of work, sanding and bonding. Fixed a couple dents. There's a crack up here that I welded. Pretty darn crappy job, but that's all right. Cause it's gonna look a lot better than it did. I'm really happy with the way this side came out. This side came out really nice. And there's some stuff going on here, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now. It's a work truck. It's gonna get more dents in it, I'm sure. So, definitely gonna look better though. All right, guys, so it's only been about a sink it for you, but it's been over a week and a half for me, and let's see the progress. Oh, so I believe where I left off was I was primering this, and there it is primered about a week later. And nothing rusted out yet and completely rotted, and the truck is not in the junkyard yet. Sprayed some black paint up in there just to hide the welds. Can't really see it, but came out pretty good. I'm not looking for perfection here. It looks a lot better than it did. There's still some dents here and there, but I can care less. This side here came out pretty decent. Not too shabby. I'm pretty happy with it overall. And it's been raining and raining and raining every day pretty much, so there's a couple dents here that I fixed. Not too bad underneath the sticker. And it was cracked up there, so I welded that quick, sprayed some primer over that. We're getting there there. We're getting closer and closer to paint. Oh man, I can't wait till this thing's painted. It just looks like it looks like it came out of a scrapyard, which is kind of cool, but it's all about image, guys. You know, when you're rolling up in people's, like, really expensive ritzy cul-de-sacs to their really expensive houses and doing work, you know, not many people appreciate stuff like this. All they do is look at it and say, man, that guy drives a truck from the junkyard and... Uh, you know, what kind of work is he going to do? So it's kind of a lot of things, unfortunately, are about image. You kind of are what you look like. And most of you guys, as my viewers, and most people really appreciate the way I built this whole truck from basically scratch. And it's really not an old truck. I mean, it is as it isn't. There's a lot of modern upgraded parts on this thing. So it is kind of more of a newer truck than an older truck. And there's so many people that appreciate it, but a lot of people that hire me to do work with my skid steer and they see this truck pull up there, you know, they, it just doesn't really look good. So I think when it's painted the orange and I'm going to paint the, the box like that same gray that's on the primer there, I'm going to paint the box. I think it's just going to look so much nicer going down the road. Just don't get too close to it. Alright, so this video took an unexpected turn, and unexpected turn turned out to be a really exciting unexpected turn. So most of you guys don't know this about me, and I've never said anything about it on YouTube, which I'm actually surprised. But uh, for like the last 15 years or so, I've been a train horn collector, and I don't mean the cheap... Uh, sheet metal things that you buy off Amazon. I mean like real locomotive train horns and uh, I'm not so much a collector anymore, but back in the day I was a huge collector. I had like 15 sets of these things and uh, You know, they don't give them away. They're pretty cheap. So 15 sets is is quite a bit and uh, a lot of them were pretty rare But I sold most of them off. I wish I didn't but I needed the money for some other stuff I want to do I actually sold like I think four sets for a guitar I wanted that I still have and never play. 
and uh, but I still have three sets and you could probably see where I'm going with this so it's about time that the old international earns a set of train horns and real locomotive train horns antique ones at that so got a little surprise for you guys let's break these babies out I'll show you some stuff okay so these ones here are the ones I'm going to put on the truck I don't know what you guys know about train horns, but I'll kind of fill you in. This is what they call a Gullwing P3. And it is set up for to be a P5. The reason they call it a P3 is the P is the, I believe the series is what you would call it. And the three is the bells. Now it's been a hot minute since I've been, you know, I used to be so good with these train horns. I'd be able to hear it from a distance and and uh, you know tell you exactly what it is and everything about them and I've gotten a lot rusty on that kind of stuff because I haven't really been into it as much as I was before and I really miss it but these are Nathan Airchime most of your train horns are actually made by Nathan Airchime or Leslie company um, personally I think the Nathan Airchime sound way better um, if you guys watch a lot of videos with trucks, you've probably seen and heard about K-series horns, K-3s, K-5s, K-3LAs, K-5LAs. But these are Nathan Airchime P-3s. You got the 1, the 4, and I believe the, the 2. Okay, 1, 2, and 4. Yep, it's been a while, guys takes me a minute to get back but these are pretty much the quietest of the train horns out there um for the most part are the p series they're pretty darn loud i mean don't don't let them fool you they're solid cast aluminum and they are very very loud but these are these are the quietest in my opinion of uh of a lot of the train horns maybe not the quietest but they're one of the quietest ones let's check out some other ones Okay, yes, I am out of breath because I just had to dig them horns out from up there on top of the shelf that haven't been up, dug out for quite a while. So here's the other two sets I have. So let's start with these. These are old. These are some of the, some of the older ones that you'll see out there. These are the M series, the M3s they call these. I'm not sure, you know, like I said, I know a lot of you guys probably don't know much about train horns, but... These are just regular M3s. They're pretty old. I don't know the year of these. You know, I used to know so much about these things, guys, and I just forgot so much. I really miss it because train horns are actually more of a musical instrument than a noisemaker. Once you get, and that's what intrigued me by it. There's so many, like there's tons and tons and tons of different um, train horns that you can get that have slightly different tones and you can actually interchange the bells on them and make them that basically plays a chord like every single one of these is a different note and uh you know they sound different it's just so cool hearing them in a distance and in case you're wondering yes they are very 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 loud they are big and they are loud this set of horns right here this is called a k5hl and this i actually bought right from a guy that uh scraps trains or something like that these are most commonly seen on your csx locomotives and these are by far my favorite sounding train horn of all time the k5hl so if you want to know what these sound like uh, anytime you see a csx train you're pretty much guaranteed to see a set of k5hls on it and i think what gives it the most unique sound is it's got the one l bell on it which means it's this is a regular number one bell i'm not going to go through and explain everything right now but this is a no, regular number one bell that most of the horns will have on it the biggest this is usually the biggest bell that you're going to see on most k series horns and this one here has the one l which is even longer and you can see it's pretty rare to see this because you know it's kind of an older this is an older one i don't know the year or anything about it but so i think that extra and the, the longer the bell is the deeper the tone so these are these are actually super super high pitch and this is th these this is high pitch too but not as high as that 
but yeah these are my favorite favorite uh sounding horn the m series these aren't super loud i mean like i said these are they're all wicked loud but these aren't these aren't as loud as these these are definitely louder than those this one and that one put together but yeah i used to have a lot of train horns and i unfortunately i sold them over the years and uh, i kept my favorite three out of them i really wish i would have kept another set that i really miss that i wish i wouldn't have that was actually a that was a k3l and it was canadian tuned so it was, it was, this is the K series, so it was these bells. You can see the difference. You got the K series, the M series, and the P series. You'll see the difference in how they're shaped. Like these, you actually have a tuning fork that spins these to tune them. These are kind of a set tune. They got shims and stuff you can put in there to mess with the tuning. But um, these are, I believe these are the oldest of the Nathan set and... Those are the second, and these, the K-Series, are most common. The K-Series are what you're going to see and hear everybody talk about, and it's going to be the most common to, to find. These, in particular, aren't really that... You don't see these on the market very often. You usually see the three, which basically just looks like these three without these two. Um, you see those everywhere, and actually, I think they sell those on eBay, and they sell, like, train horn kits and everything like that, but um, these things are super... Like, okay, I can't even, I'm trying, I can't even lift that with one hand. And yeah, I'm not the strongest person in the world, but, you know, I'm your average middle-aged male. And, uh, you know, like these here, I can lift. These are heavy, but there's no chance. Like, I don't even, I don't know, but these probably have to weigh between 40 and 50 pounds, this set right here. So... They mount with four half inch bolts. Pretty much all train horns, real train horns, are the same. They all have the same exact mounting thing on them. They mount with four half inch bolts and they got half inch pipe fitting in all of them. And most of them, you can plug this off and go from the side as well. But you usually have your, you, if you're looking for loudness, you always want to go through the bottom because the air. It takes the straightest path going in the bottom so but anyway guys I will do a separate video down the road on these train horns because I'm sure now that I let the cat out of the bag um, I'm sure people are gonna love to you know I'll set the camera and stuff up at a distance and I'll blow them and and uh, you know we can see what they sound like I, I have to clean them because these things have been sitting for years and, uh, you know, I'll do a whole separate video on train horns. Man, I really wish I had a YouTube channel when I had my other ones because I had so, it was just so fun. I'd have just the whole thing set up with a manifold and I'd be able to blow them. I used to take them to like antique truck and engine shows all the time and people loved them. And, and, uh, yeah, unfortunately when I started my YouTube channel was actually when my life started slowing down and I started to be, uh, not as ambitious as I used to be. I used to do so much stuff and now I feel lazy cause I just don't. I just don't do that much stuff anymore and it, it sucks because once you get a little bit older you just don't want to do anything anymore and I'm like ah you know train horns are cool and everything but they're not you know intriguing as like they used to be but I'll do a, a video on these three sets someday guys I'll you know I'll go a little more in depth I'll explain some more stuff hopefully some stuff will come back to me we'll plug them into the air we'll show you exactly how loud they are but for now, this video is mostly about my truck. I just kind of wanted to do a little, um, you know, not many people know a whole lot about train horns. They, um, you know, they really have no idea about them. And that's just kind of a little, uh, little lesson on train horns. But anyway, so I'm going to put these ones. These are the least valuable. Um, these and these are, I'm not going to say dollar amount, but these are very, 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 especially these are very expensive and uh, almost irreplaceable. You do not see these. That's why I didn't sell them. There's really, uh, it'd take a lot for me to sell these ones. And these here are pretty common. Um, 
but I love the sound of them and I've I actually worked pretty hard to get this particular set of horns this is actually the original blue CSX paint that was on them these are like flushly or freshly plucked off of the locomotive at the time and I've owned these horns that actually these three here I've owned for over 12 years now so I'm not letting any of these go but these uh, I do not want to put these on the truck so they can get all you know crapped up from road debris yeah, but these here these actually aren't these actually aren't as valuable as you think they would be so <clears throat> from what I remember these are the patent ones and uh I can't remember where it says that, but if you see a set of P3s that says Pat Pending, those are the more valuable ones. These are the least valuable ones. They're still valuable, but they're, you know, these are definitely the... These were actually my first set of train horns, which if you're wondering, well, why didn't you keep one of the other ones? So this was the first set of train horns I ever bought right here. And this is what started the whole thing for me. So these are kind of sentimental, but they're worth the least out of out of these three sets with that being said i'm totally okay putting them on the truck and you know getting them all crap from the road and and all that so all right so back to the video i definitely did some off camera stuff i'll explain it here in a second so you guys can see what i did <clears throat> i don't know exactly what the measurement is but like i just stated these train horns, for the most part, even the Leslie's, the other brands, they all mount the same way. They got four half-inch bolts. I don't know what the measurements are. It doesn't matter. But I already made this thing. I made this a couple nights ago. So this is what is going to mount to the frame of the truck and then mount the horns to the frame. All it is is a, I think it's like a four-inch. Yeah, it's a four-by-four four piece of square tubing. And I didn't have any black paint left, so magenta or maroon it was. And uh, <clears throat> I drilled the holes. So these horns are going to mount on here. See, even this set here is pretty heavy, but it's not anywhere as heavy as the other ones. So I'm going to mount that there. I'm going to mount this on the truck first. Mount the horns. I went out to the truck shop, the truck store, whatever you want to call it this morning that sells all kinds of expensive goodies and spent quite a bit of money on these dot air fittings and 20 feet of half inch hose i'm gonna tell you guys a little bit of a little secret i'm actually kind of doing this wrong so train horns train horns need a lot and i mean a lot of volume and when you run a half inch hose even though it looks big it's not enough for train horns. Train horns need like a three-quarter inch hose all day long. If you're looking to get the most volume and loudness out of them, you want three-quarter inch hose all day long, no questions asked, and you want to run them about 120 to 150 PSI. Well, this is half-inch hose because, like I said, guys, these are more or less going on the truck. I'm not putting these on the truck to be a jerk and scare the crap out of people and do stuff my orange truck it needs air horns put on it all this thing's ever had on it was a crappy little electric horn that you could barely hear and horns are a safety thing and i really need to put a horn on the truck so i'm not putting these on there to be mr cool guy with the train horns billy big rigger and all that not that it matters, but with the half inch hose, you're going to be plenty good enough. But just keep in mind that if you want your full uh, maximum sound, if you're going to ever hook up train horns, do not run a half inch hose. Run three quarter inch or even five eighths would be better. And of course, the problem with doing stuff like this on commercial trucks, and I use this truck every day is it's always going through DOT inspections and stuff. So unfortunately, when you do stuff on a commercial vehicle like this, you have to go out and you have to buy all the DOT approved garbage, all the good DOT brass fittings and all that, because the last thing that you want is to just cobble some regular household air hose on it and uh, go through an inspection and have them red tag you because you're not using the proper stuff. So I went out to the truck store and got all the DOT approved stuff and uh, we're gonna hook it all up
Okay, so I'll just explain this real quick so you guys have an idea what's going on. Okay, so this is going to come out of the air tank. And the air tank already had an existing 3 8 line that ran up into the cab to supply uh, several things with air pressure. And that's all it had. It just had a half inch, 3 8 and that was it. So I'm putting this on there. So this right here is going to be the half inch line that goes to the valve for the train horns and i've always wanted to do it and i figured now's the time is put a quarter inch uh air accessory port for an air hose say i get a flat tire or something like that or need air for whatever reason compressed air uh on the job site or on the road especially for flat tires because that's just so nice to have air on board i could just simply plug my hose in and there you go so this was the opportunity to do that so i might as well take advantage of it and uh, do that so this is all put together now we just got to put it on the truck all right guys we're just going to kind of talk as we work here so here's the air tank on the truck this is the only air tank on the truck and that's another thing i wanted to discuss so <clears throat> train horns as i stated about the hose earlier require a lot a lot a lot a lot of air and it can be dangerous putting it on a truck with air brakes especially if you only have a single tank like i'm running so me being experienced with train horns and experienced with trucks i kind of know but for somebody that doesn't know and just puts a set of train horns on their truck Train horns will, I don't know how big this tank is, probably by the looks of it, like a five gallon. Train horns will drain this air tank, guys, in a matter of seconds. You honk that set of horns, and this tank is going to be drained. So, <clears throat> whoever knows how an air brake system works knows that when you're out of air, your brakes lock up. Or don't work. So... You have to keep that in mind at all times when it comes to safety because if you just go and lay right on these horns and this thing runs out of air your brakes are going to lock up and you're not going to have air pressure so use a little bit of common sense when you I would suggest when you put the horns on and get them hooked up build the truck up to its regular operating pressure and just unload the horns just blast them full blast and see how long it takes to empty the air system see how long it takes to go down in the danger zone the danger zone i'd say is about 80 psi 80 90 psi uh, you get much below you know like 70 psi you're gonna start running into trouble so that way you have a mental vision on how much you can honk them horns before your air tank blows I'm not looking to lay on these horns for minutes at a time like a real train does because you'd never be able to do that. But just keep that in mind that they use a lot of air and they will drain your tanks super fast. I used to have a deuce and a half way, way, way before YouTube. And uh, I used to put train horns on that all the time. Those don't have air brakes. Those have uh, air over hydraulic brakes, which is uh, just a air pressured brake booster pretty much. And... I actually had a, I think it was a 30 gallon tank that I hooked up to that with a check valve just simply for the train horns. That's when I used to go to shows and, and all that stuff and I just wanted to be able to just blast those things. So if you're making a rig and you want to be able to blast the horns for a long time, you're going to need at least a 20 gallon tank. And, uh, you know, I think that's only a five gallon and that's the only tank for the truck. So we're we're only going to look for a quick toot or something. We're not looking to just lay right on these things for for hours. And, uh, you know, that's another thing to keep in mind. The bigger the horns, the more air they use. So these horns here, that's another reason why I'm choosing these, because out of all the train horns I have, these use the least amount of air. So they're kind of a perfect fit for my application. Because the last thing that I feel like doing right now is plumbing in another air tank for just a set of train horns on a truck that i use every day it's just not worth it okay so you're probably wondering where this train horn bracket is going to go and where the horns themselves are going to go 
Well, I was hemming and hawing and hemming and hawing, and I decided that I'm going to mount this bracket here to these two bolts. This is the riser that the cab bolts to, to the frame. So I am going to mount this to these two bolts. I'm going to fight for probably six hours to get these bolts off and mount this right here. And then the horns are going to mount on this and the horns are going to face downwards towards the ground. These four bolts here are the motor mount bolts. I was thinking about mounting the horns to the motor mount bolts. However, <clears throat> I don't feel like screwing around with these motor mount bolts. Then I got to you know, I got to jack up the motor, take the weight off the motor, and there's actually a bunch of lines and stuff that run inside here underneath, and it's a pain in the ass to get to the other side of these bolts. And I just I just don't feel like dealing with that, and I'd rather just not monkey with the motor mount bolts simply because they uh, kind of, you know, hold the engine into the truck. So I'd rather not screw with them. They're, they're there. I'm going to leave them alone. I'm not going to screw with it. These bolts, on the other hand, they're not as important. They only hold the cab on. You don't need a cab. You could you could drive a truck if the cab falls off, so no big deal. And I put these little, you can see these 5 16 bolt heads are protruding, and what that is is to compensate for the slack of this bracket right here. So you'll see that this is going to bolt on right here, and just kind of a little bit extra support to keep keep it from twisting because like I stated a million times those horns are freaking heavy and when you mount them on your truck you definitely want to find a good solid place to mount them to where uh, you know they're they're gonna be kind of out of the way and you want to find a good solid place you don't want to just mount them to a sheet metal cab or uh, aluminum fender because they will just bend right off you would need to actually make a good bracket to mount them to and guys just seems like there just ain't enough hours in the day anymore and you're trying to do stuff like this so these two bolts were an absolute pain to get off so I ended up just cutting them with the grinder so now we're gonna get our new ones stuffed through here it's not the easiest spot to get to on the back side I don't know how we're gonna do it Somehow, we're going to try to get this started. Actually was not too bad. Carefully, 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 without pushing these through. Get these things started on here. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's just nice when they start like that. Alright, let's see if we can get in here to do this one. Oh, yeah. Cool. All right. Of course, a piece of tubing probably wasn't the best choice, but honestly, I think it was a good choice because this is going to be a very robust, strong, durable platform for our train horns to sit on. So I'm going to get these things tightened down and we're going to go to our next step here. All right, our next step. So as I was saying earlier, you see that you have three points of access for the horn air. There, there, and there. So on this particular setup, we are not going to be using the bottom one. So we're going to pull the plug out of the side here. And... We 
I'm gonna put a little Teflon on the threads. We're not worried about an air leak here. Couple things, a couple reasons I'm putting Teflon on these threads, and I'm sure there's more scientific items you can use. Number one, this plug is steel and the horns are aluminum. Anybody that's been doing mechanical work for a while knows that steel and aluminum are not very good friends. So I always think that that'll kind of keep them from fighting a little bit. Maybe not. And number two, I want to keep the water out. I'm not worried about air leaks when we blow the horns here. I want to try to keep some water out. And keep in mind with these horns. Actually, I think we're going to run into it right here. So <clears throat> when you're doing something like this and you're mounting it, just make sure that that plug that you're putting on does not protrude. Because if it does, when you go to tighten this down, you will crack the casting. And if you just made a hefty investment to buy a set of train horns, the last thing you want to do is crack the casting because you are going to be SOL. And I don't like to tighten these things down and go crazy on them. So this does protrude a little bit. So I think I'm going to take this out and I'm going to file it a little bit. So we got a nice flat surface here and it's actually going to be dished in a little bit. I can probably tighten it more, but I don't want to go crazy on it. Yeah, I'd have to tighten that quite a bit more. So no big deal. We'll just take it out and we will file it down a little bit or grind it down a little bit to make the plug a little bit flatter. They do make low profile plugs, but I don't have anything like that on hand. So I'm going to make do with what I got for now. All right, got our plug threaded into an old fitting. I'm just going to file it down a little bit. I do have a lathe I can chuck it up on, but going for fanciness here. Or then again, when you find out you need to take more off than what you bargained for, you can always get fancy and chuck it in the lathe. profile plug came out pretty good. Let's see how it fits this time. Oh, I'm already liking it. I don't like to have these things in there tight in case you ever got to get them out. Oh yeah. All right. Just going to demonstrate on camera here. Got our straight edge and we are not protruding at all. This is almost as important as checking your liner protrusion when you're putting the motor together. But yeah, we are definitely not going to crack any manifold train horn housings today. Train horn manifolds today. Of course, guys, I say that with confidence till we go to crank her down and the freaking thing goes full harbor freight on us. All right, well, it got too dark last night to continue working on this, so here it is the next day. And there's the bracket I mounted. Now you can really see it better where it's going to go. There's the four holes for the horns to mount to. And <clears throat> come up under here. Look at our little adapter thing we made. Again, originally the only thing that there was coming out of this tank was an elbow and just this line. And this line goes up to the cab and feeds the, the cab uh, whatever air it needs for gauge and all that other stuff. So basically what I did is I I need this half inch fitting here for the horns and I figured while I'm at it I will put a fitting here to hook a hose up to in case I ever need air on the road which is very very handy. 
I'm actually surprised I haven't done this yet. It's one thing that I used to have when I was driving a uh, truck on my own. I'd have an air hose that hooked up to the red glad hand. So you always have air. So the next thing we got to figure out is where we're going to put our valve. And I think I got that figured out. All the other trucks I had horns in, I put the valve right here. But you'd always get the crap scared out of you when you get out and your pants catch the valve and it blows the horns. And uh, there's really no easy way to put this here without drilling a whole bunch of holes in the floor, which I really don't want to do that. There's already a bunch of holes in the firewall. Plenty enough which for hoses to come through. And I think what I'm going to do is take this valve and mount it right here. So it's you got easy access to it. And uh, I just sat in here and my legs aren't going to hit it or anything like that. So I think that's where we're going to put the valve. So for the valve, I got... Just a regular natural gas ball valve, two elbows, and I got these to go on there. So in case you're wondering why I didn't just get these as elbows, just the brass, like I did on the thing, is because they're like three times as much money for the elbow versus the straight, and the regular cast iron is cheaper, so being the cheapskate that I am, there you have it. Actually, this is going to work better anyway, I think, for for flow. This is more mandrel bent, and these things are a hard 90 when they're, when they're bent. So, especially the air going through the valve, you want to flow pretty freely for your horns. So, we'll get this all put together, and I got these things here to mount it in the truck with. All right, we got our first airline run. This is the airline that's going to power the valve, supply the valve with air. Got it all snaked up through the frame rails. Tighten this to about 800 foot pounds. Seriously, guys, these things don't have to be that tight. I got one finger on this thing. That's good. They don't have to be. I usually like to pull on them a little bit to make sure they're not going to pop off, but they really don't have to be that tight. I see so many people tighten these things right down, and you're actually hurting yourself. You're actually worsening the seal. It's kind of a lesson here that I don't think we're going to learn, but a lesson that I've learned before that I've put onto this. So <clears throat> I measured roughly, and I think I needed about 15 feet of airline to do this job. Well, knowing that you always need more, I went ahead and got 20 feet of airline. And there's about 5 feet left. I know we're going to have plenty left to go, you know, from where the <clears throat> valve is to the horns. However, if I would have just got 15 feet, there's no way I would have had enough. So... I always get I always get like an extra five or ten feet you know this stuff isn't that much money but yeah just a lesson that I've learned several times and there you go if I would have got the 15 feet I measured for I wouldn't have had enough and we wouldn't be having horns today all right for the moment you've all been waiting for well this probably ain't the moment you've all been waiting for the moment you've probably all been waiting for was to actually get these damn things working so you can hear what they sound like I'm sure most of you guys are probably just gonna fast forward right through the video and go to that point and if you're still here just throw in the comment I'm still here I appreciate everyone watching me do all this cockamamie nonsense All right, 
It looked pretty good on there. Just got to tighten up the bolt, hook the airline up, and we are ready to roll. All right, there we go. We are all hooked up. I got the wires. Yeah, the wires. Yeah, because these are these are actually electric horns, guys. These are actually wires in here that transmit the electricity charged air to the horns to make them activate. Anyway, I drilled two nice holes in this because I thought I was going to be able to use the hole. I can't even see it up here, but it's too close to the clutch pedal when the hose has got inside of the truck. So I ended up drilling two holes here out of the way. I did a nice job. I put rubber grommets in there and stuff, so we're not going to chew through the lines. Got everything going back in there nice. And there is the valve that's all mounted, nice and solid. Lines come up through the floor, go up in the dash. Everything's all nice and neat for the most part, except the cobbled up wiring that has been in this truck for years. This is gonna be the next truck to get rewired someday. So we wanna make sure that valve is off. So when we start it up, And under here is where we got our splitter connection. So you got hose that goes in the truck. Nice convenient air fitting that's probably going to leak within a week. Every time I put one of these on a truck, I end up plugging it off anyway. But it's still nice to have the quarter inch uh, port there. So if something happens, you can unscrew it, screw your hose in there. These things never last. Even the good ones that you buy from the truck places, the DOT approved ones, they still don't last. They get all covered with stuff. It's a bad place for it. And then finally you got half inch line for the horns. So now I'm going to take some $30 a can black trim black here and uh, spray this black. $30 a can because this is all I got. I got some cheap Rust-Oleum. I'm going to hit the other side off camera. But I got some cheap Rust-Oleum, but the frickin' nozzle on the damn thing broke and it won't spray any paint. That's actually why I painted this thing maroon instead of black. But I forgot I had to trim black. Stuff's not cheap. But it'll keep that thing from rusting and looking like absolute garbage. So, alright, next is going to come the moment you've all been waiting for. But before we do that, well before I do that, I'm actually going to have to wait. You guys aren't. I am loading up a whole bunch of stuff to bring to the new shop and uh, I got a bunch of nice good used tires back there that I'm going to use and I'm just trying to clean up this yard and bring a lot of the stuff over there so I got about an hour or so to load up and uh, we're going to load everything on the trailer and get the heck out of here and hopefully don't have any air leaks but that's when I'm going to get to hear the horns for the first time. And one more thing, one thing I'm definitely going to probably order on Amazon or something like in the next day is now I'm definitely going to want to put a mud flap on this fender because all the stuff coming off of these tires is going to go on these horns for the most part and just nice to keep these nice. They don't give these things away guys so when you buy them you, you want to keep them safe even if they are your cheapest set. Definitely stuff's gonna come off of there. There's really no other place to mount them. I really didn't even want to mount them there, but that kind of made the most sense. I use this here for my tire chains. So that's not really a option. And, you know, where else are you gonna go? I mean, I don't want to clutter the engine compartment. The whole point of me building this truck the way I did was to make it simple and make it so I can actually get to stuff. And not stuff this engine way back into the firewall like all the other trucks. I want to make it so I can get in here easy. And if I put a set of train horns in there, that's just going to make it harder. I actually kind of wanted to put them on this side. But as you can see, the exhaust kind of takes up a lot of real estate here. I would have liked to run the exhaust down in between the engine and the frame like most Peterbilts. Or actually pretty much a lot of trucks do. However, when I put this motor in this truck, the exhaust was already set up to run right here. And uh, they don't give this pipe away either. So someday when this pipe rots out, which it will, I'll worry about it then. I might even put two stacks on the truck. 
and then I'll run it down there. But for now, that's where it is, and I don't feel like moving it. All right, guys, this is the moment you've all been waiting for, I'm sure. I promise, I got the trailer hooked up and everything. I promise I did not try them yet. All I did was started the truck and hooked the trailer up, and I can't wait to try them and have you guys join me. It's been about 10 years since I've had train horns on a truck, and man, I really, I really don't know why I haven't done it sooner, but this is, uh, this is gonna be really cool. So I'm super excited to, to see what they sound like. We'll put you like 30 feet from the truck. You could definitely see the smile on my face. Yeah, they sound wicked good. They're definitely not as loud as they could be with that half inch hose, which is actually only 3 8 inside diameter, but they're plenty loud enough for the truck. I'm gonna give them the onions a little bit more when I get to my place simply because my Amish neighbors over here are hooking up a team of horses. And uh, I actually just noticed that, but they're they're pretty good. They don't care, but I, I don't want to have their horses freak out and someone get hurt. So I'll really give them the berries when we're when we get to my place. So I just looked at my air gauge. I had a hundred and just just under 120 psi when I started that deal. When I just started honking them, and then it went down to just under a hundred. So that little bit was about 20. Just around 20 PSI it took out of the tank. So like I was saying yesterday, you really want to watch it, especially when you're only running a small tank. You really want to use some common sense when you're going down the road and stuff. You know, you see a group of kids or whatever, it, it's tempting to just lay right on them, but you really need to test it out and make sure that your air tank can handle the capacity of these things because they use a lot of air. Uh, what you heard me do is really just all I'm ever gonna do with them. I'm not gonna lay on them and have my brakes come on. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm super happy. So I'm gonna get the rest of this crap loaded up and we are gonna hit the road. And uh, actually, maybe on our way, maybe we'll make a couple kids days that do the arm pump. Probably not gonna get it on video, but man, I get that all the time. I get kids that go like that and I, I ain't got no horns. They're, they're so disappointed, or, or I blow my little electric city horn, and then they look at me like, what is that? But, yeah, they're, they're really gonna make some kids happy now. All right, so we're back home, and I'm gonna have the woman blow the horns. I'm probably a couple hundred feet from the truck right now. Oh yeah, they're pretty loud. All right, we're gonna do a quick test here on the leak down on our tank. So you can see that we're just over 90 PSI right now. And we'll just show you how much air these things use. So, yeah, you do that too many times when you're driving. You'll definitely run out of air. <laughs> 